We will now reconvene into open session. There are no reportable action items from closed session. The board will vote on graduation waivers as part of the consent agenda. I'd like to ask now for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That passed. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to ask for a volunteer to read the board norms. I will. Um, so the board will come prepared and be fully present and engaged, deliberate effectively and listen openly without interrupting, work collaboratively and strive for consensus, maintain perspective with a sense of humor, not repeat each other or ourselves, not have side conversations, give full attention to the proceedings, no cell phone use, focus on the best interest of all students, and commit to no surprises. Um, and I did just want to add that um, though these are board norms, um, w particularly when we have a full meeting, um, we ask that the audience engage um, in the same uh, norms, right? Because um, if you're having conversations in the audience, um, that can be distracting to us up here as we consider the business. Thank you. I'd also like to add, uh, people have asked me this before, our district, unlike many school districts, we do not have a um, civil policy or, or civility policy, like becoming very popular with uh, not only school districts, but um, city councils. And so our board instead decided to have these norms just to remind us we think it's a lot more meaningful. Um, and we really strive to have um, constructive deliberation. So that's the meaning of what we just conducted. So the next agenda item is um, the consent agenda. And I'd first like to ask if we have any public comment on the consent agenda. I'd next like to ask whether any board member would like any item removed from the consent agenda to be considered um, on its own separately. No? Okay. Can I please ask for a motion then to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. That passed. Um, so now we'll be moving on to um, the public comment. And I'm first going to read what's in the agenda, and then I'm going to make a, a little bit of a clarification because I see quite a few of you, and I'm assuming a lot of you are going to be making public comment. Um, so first I'll read this out loud. You also have it with you um, in front. The board recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and provides this time for members of the audience to address the board on any school-related matter not on this agenda. The board can take no action at this time. Speakers are requested to identify themselves prior to addressing the board and will be heard for up to three minutes. The presiding officer of the board shall determine, based on time constraints of the board, whether some time less than three minutes shall be allocated to individual speakers. So what I would like to explain a little further is that this is not specific to our board. Any legislative body in the state of California, um, when there's public comment on any item not on the agenda, we are not allowed by law to make an action. We're not allowed to discuss it with each other and to interact with you. And the reason for that is, is because the Brown Act, it's a way of protecting the public so the public can see any sort of board action and deliberation that it's always done in public. And so we only can do that with anything that we've agendized. And that's why we have requirements of um, releasing the agenda ahead of time with a description. So if we were to start speaking with you about any of your comments, basically anybody that's home that might be interested in that topic, they would then miss the opportunity to hear about the deliberation. So I always want to explain that when we have a lot of people here so that you do know that we really are listening. We really value that you came out to address the board. It's really, really important for us. And we want to thank you, but we're not going to be able to have a dialogue with you. Um, so there's two more things. Can I, if, if possible, and I know and you're free to change your mind, but can I get a, just a show of hands of how many of you think you'll be providing public comment? Okay. Um, pardon me? Has everyone filled out the card? Um, I'll get to that in a moment. So 
Um, as, as the statement said, um, as the presiding officer, um, I'm able to, to change it to two minutes. I don't like to do that, though, because I know many of you probably have timed your statement to three minutes, and so I'd like to avoid doing that. So um, our business of work was supposed to start at 6.20, so I'm first going to ask the fellow board members if um, you'd be agreeable to allowing public comment to go for an additional 45 minutes. We'll start with that and see how that goes um, to allow everyone time. Sometimes for clarification, there's an option to split public comment. We'll have public comment at the beginning and then we'll conduct board business and then return. Um, I don't want to do that tonight, especially since we have so many students here tonight um, and it might be late evening. So can I see a nod of heads for consensus? Very good, thank you. So that's what we'll do. Um, I think we'll go ahead with the three minutes. Um, in the back of the room, this is not a requirement, and actually by law, we can't make you do it. It's really convenient for us, though. These are the yellow cards, and it just helps us with um, the meeting minutes, um, the district, um, assistant in the meeting minutes always writes down who um, spoke. There's not a lot of information in the minutes about what you say, but there's, um, we always like to get the, the spelling correct. And so we appreciate it, but it's not required. Um, so I'll keep these up here and, and we'll go from there. Um, what else? Keep thinking there's something. Is, it'll, oh, I know. Um, if for some reason, this is another thing that's a little frustrating for people. Um, we have to be really strict to the three minutes. We have to be consistent with everyone. And the reason for that, again, is that if I were to allow one person to speak longer than three minutes, um, by law, they could say that I was agreeing with what that person was saying, so I'm going to let that person speak longer than somebody else. So when the three minutes is up, I'm going to, you'll see the timer and it's behind me and a buzzard will go off. And um, I'm going to ask you to please, please stop and thank you. Um, if you have your written comment and you haven't finished, feel free to bring it up for Mary and then she'll give the copies to all the board members. So we'll st still see your, your complete statement. Okay, so there's no requirement if, of order. Um, so I'm now going to open public comment and please, um, anyone that would like to come to the podium, please do. And um, we'll wait until Mary, are you ready with the timer? Um, so thank you, sir. If you could please state your name, I'd really appreciate it. Thank sure. you. Uh, Ken Broad, fortunately I speak very quickly, so I'll be under three minutes. I want to first thank the board, Dan, um, Karen, Kevin, Cynthia, Leslie, and of course, uh, Dr. Topier, um, this is essentially a volunteer position for you. You're doing it because you love it. You essentially are capped at, I think it's $200 a month. It's roughly what Bill got paid to teach every day, hours per day, the, the, the women's uh, t tennis uh, team. Um, you're here because you care. I'm here because I care. This is the first board meeting that I've ever attended. Um, Bill coaches tennis because he loves the sport. He loves seeing children develop into adults over the four-year college career. Background, since many of you uh, don't know me, my wife and I are enormous supporters of the public schools. My wife was chair of Kiddo. We're massive donors to Kiddo, Tam High Foundation boosters, schools rule. Um, you can ask Mary Jane Burke. She knows both of us extremely well. Point is, we're huge supporters of the public schools. Um, given this history, let me not equivocate. The unceremonious and inexplicable firing of Bill Washhauer has shaken my faith in the system to its core, to its core, this one event. I was anxious. It ruined our holiday. That's, that's how I can tell you how bad it was. Both my daughters, Madeline, who's now a sophomore at USC, and Alyssa is currently a junior, uh, were taught by Bill, uh, as well as Wally, Larry, and Paul, volunteers. These people do it out of the goodness of their heart and the love of the sport. Bill instilled important life lessons around discipline, hard work, time management, commitment, teamwork, and grit, all key ingredients for building important life skills. If those words sound familiar, they should. They were drawn almost verbatim from your newly revised um, mission statement for TAM. The firing of Bill Washauer is completely antithetical to your espoused vision for TAM. Full stop. That's my opinion, if you want a sound bite. The fact pattern, we can find no reason for Bill's firing. The district itself was cowardly enough to not even give Bill to his face 
the courtesy of a reason for his dismissal. The district has hidden behind the convenient legalese of we don't comment on personnel issues. This sounds reasonable, but to summarily fire Bill after taking the girls to both MCAL, NCS victories, his long and beloved tenure, and saying we're going in a different direction is farcical. That's the only way to describe it. It would be akin to the 49ers coach telling Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, we're going to go in a different direction for the Super Bowl. It's just not working out. Even worse is this implicitly impugns Bill's reputation. For those who don't know Bill, they assume he must have done something really bad, which is, which is clearly not the case. Um, what lesson does this teach our children? J.C. Farr spent an hour with the girls touting platitudes like change is good, trust the system. My daughter said he was talking in circles. Kids know when they're being spun. And crap, I'm out of time. Thank you very much. Um, can we let Ms. Effel go for a moment? Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Laura Effel. I'm sorry, I'm getting over a cold. <clears throat> I live in Larkspur, and um, <clears throat> I'm not here to talk about tennis. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for moving this section to the early part of the meeting. It used to be at the end, and we never stayed for it. Um, but secondly, <clears throat> I'd like to complain about a mailing I got that was sent to seniors. I got one that said I was entitled to a senior exemption. Well, I already know that. I don't think this was sent to me to um, help me with my, my rights. I think it was sent as a piece of electioneering at taxpayer expense. And um, I don't appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, members of the board and administrators. My name is Susan Durham, and my husband, Ben, and I have had two daughters over seven years who have played tennis for Bill Washauer. We were told that Mr. Christensen had released Bill from his coaching duties to take the tennis program in another direction. This was just after winning NCS and right before finals week, which was heartless and thoughtless timing. It's clear to me the district wanted to remove Bill, but had no plan in place or knew which steps to take in a new direction. My reaction was one of surely this decision was made because of misinformation and we have bigger problems if this is how personnel decisions are made and implemented in our schools. Tara was really kind to meet with me last week, but I was quite shaken when I sat down with you. Because five minutes beforehand, I had heard um, waiting for you, to, for you to be free, I was exposed to the hubris and lack of professionalism that surrounds the situation. I arrived in the district offices and took a chair while I waited for both Tara and her admin to finish their conversations. While sitting there, I heard Le Lars bellow from his office, this wash hour thing, we're just going to pay him to go away. I ask you, wouldn't that have been more accurate if phrased, our athletic director screwed up and never informed Bill of the conditions of his contract which allowed for postseason pay. We need to rectify that and pay him the money he is owed. I will apologize to him for not catching that as my oversight position as um, HR of the district. Wouldn't that have been more appropriate? Instead, he acted like a bully who does not have the good sense to close his door while having such sensitive discussions. And by the way, I understand the monies Bill was entitled to for season overtime did not include the thousands of dollars in penalties and fees for not paying that compensation on a timely manner. Isn't that HR 101? Our family has put money towards instruction replacement. I use that term because my daughters often consulted outside sources for large gaps in missing material due to bad teaching. I'm thankful that I can afford to do that, but what about the families in our district that can't? How, how, is, how are kids getting left behind because teachers aren't teaching and being held to an accountability standard? I would hope the head of personnel might spend some time on working with those struggling teachers instead of stirring up issues where there aren't any. My last point is that district has an issue with community engagement. I can understand why. Many parents believe that no matter how much we speak up, nothing will be done about it. At least I'm standing up here today to model for my daughter that change can occur. I hope you set that same example and recognize mistakes made here for the sake of our students. Thank you. Hi. I'm Wally Tice. I've lived in Mill Valley for 35 years. I had two daughters to go through Tam High School. My older one, Malia, went through 2003 to 2005 on the tennis program. She was the number one player. Uh, she has gone, went on to, to success at Cal, uh, and Bill Washauer assisted during her last year as a senior. My younger one, Lonnie, she went to Tam from 
2009 through 2014. She graduated, went to UC Davis, played tennis for UC Davis women's team. During those years with, with Lonnie uh, and with Bill, um, I've, I've, I'm here to really sort of give a, a historical perspective on Bill and his contribution to TAM tennis because I've been around since 2003. And so I know what a program looked like back in those days when a very nice person ran the program but really didn't have much uh, in terms of standards or demands or teamwork building as a primary goal. I can tell you that Bill Washauer did, and that was his primary reason for being a tennis uh, coach was to build character, to uh, build the kinds of, of uh, collaborative uh, effort and uh, student acknowledgement that we all ought to aspire to, and I know the board does. I know the board says that they want the best for their kids. They want the best for our kids. They want the best programs for our kids. Yet the direction that has been taken in this instance is so contrary to what everybody in the, in the community, everybody behind me would say is the best direction for our kids that I feel compelled to speak up. Just as a perspective on championships, the girls program over Bill's tenure has won 12 MCAL championships and two NCS Division I championships, one Division I NCS championship. Along with those team titles, 14 individual team and NCS, uh, I'm sorry, individual MCAL and NCS titles have been won under his uh, uh, leadership. On the boys side, uh, six MCAL, two NCS runner-up positions, and four individual titles, all because of the teamwork and bonding that Bill builds. I was taken by the, the mission statement that, uh, that the, the district has currently underway. And uh, the first part of it talks, one of, the, one of the first parts of it talks about encouraging kids to be more resilient, civic-minded, and good collaborators. You would not believe how many times Bill Washauer, even this last season, used the word resilient, used the word resilient to talk about our team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excuse me, do you have more of a statement that you'd like to leave with us? Did you, did you finish? Because if you have it written, we would love to see it. I, I only have notes, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's fine, that's fine, thank you. Oh, good evening, my name is Stephen Burke and I have been a resident of Mill Valley since 2001. Both of our sons are Tamil Pius High School grads. I have served at Tam as the freshman boys basketball coach and as an assistant on the boys JV and varsity teams. I've also coached and continue to coach at Mount Carmel CYO and have done so for more than 30 years, both in New Jersey and California. I'm also a member of the Mill Valley Tennis Club and I currently serve as president. Bill Washauer is one of the first people I met when I moved to Mill Valley in 2001. His son Eli and my son Evan were classmates and teammates. Bill and I served as assistant basketball coaches together. While I have never been close friends with Bill, I know him to be a man of integrity, honor, and extraordinary commitment to coaching and developing young adults. For 13 years and 32 seasons, he has volunteered enormous amounts of time and energy to developing players who play well, who play within the rules, and who demonstrate sportsmanship. Sometimes his passion for fair play and observance of rules may have rubbed some people the wrong way, but no one can say that on the merits and the facts, he was wrong. This year, for the first time in its 90-year history, the Mill Valley Tennis Club hosted the NCS Division I Girls Championships. We did so in recognition of Bill and his outstanding record of achievement and commitment to tennis. We have many young players from our club who have played for Bill, and you can see from the turnout tonight in the online petition what he has meant to these kids. All coaches in youth sports today face occasional difficulties with children or hyper-involved parents who may not share the coach's perspective. All successful coaches face some envy or resentment from their competitors. That is the nature of coaching. To learn <clears throat> shortly after the completion of his best girl season ever that he had been terminated because the school or the district or someone was going in a different direction was truly shocking. In addition to the reputational damage such vague reasons cause to the individual, <clears throat> the damage to the TAM tennis program 
and in particular, this year's group of boys who are starting their season without a real, experienced, qualified coach is unconscionable. I see several players practicing every day, including seniors who have worked for years to get to this point. It is highly likely that the only direction the TAM tennis community is going is down, sadly, unless you know of specific, verifiable instances of violations worthy of dismissal. There appears to be no GPS guiding this decision. Only a nagging sense that some people somewhere behind the scenes are being appeased. The reason we are here tonight is to ask you to take leadership in correcting this situation. Look into your own hearts and your own experience and ask yourself if you would want to be treated this way or if you want your children treated this way. Would you stand for that? Thank you. Three Thank minutes. you for your now comment. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Katrin Gaukul, and I'm the mother of Jamila Karam, member of the girls' tennis team. We moved to South Salito in 2017. Often moving and starting in a new school is a challenging experience. I was very pleased when I received a phone call from Coach Bill Bashauer. He called to invite Jamila to come to tennis team tryouts. Jamila became a member of the TAM girls tennis team and she immediately became friends with wonderful girls who shared the same passion. Bill Warshauer is a uh, heart and soul of the tennis team. We've been involved in tennis long enough to know what makes tennis team successful. It's having a wonderful coach with years of experience. Bill is a passionate, caring and hardworking coach. Firing him without having a replacement and saying that Bill was fired because of the new direction is confusing and does not sound sincere. For the future success of Tam Denistin, bring back Bill. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Antoinette and I have two children at home at the moment. My daughter Sophia is a senior and has been on the TAM tennis team for four years. And my son is a freshman who is looking forward to being on the TAM tennis team with Bill as his coach. I'm here to talk to you about how Bill has been treated and how contrary it is to the district's new mission statement. Your mission statement says and, and clearly sort of delineates that v valuing the common good and establishing a, establishing a set of values equality in education, and the need for empathy, compassion, collaboration, and alignment with inclusive community values. On all of these counts, you have failed. You have failed these children, because they have not been able to be a part of this decision making that you have so callously sort of taken, uh, you know, who has, effect has affected them, in, you know, in a greater way. Um, I urge you to take back your decision and to reconsider and, and allow the children to also have a voice within this sort of choice they need to make. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Good evening. Hi. Um, I'm Katie Bolger, junior on the tennis team, just finished my third season. Um, I'd just like to start out by saying that Bill has been nothing Can but Can you a kind put the microphone a little closer? Thank you. Thank sorry. you. Sorry to interrupt. We'll give you a few more seconds. Go ahead. Um, Bill has been nothing but a kind person, coach, and role model for all of us. If you had a bad day, he knew how to help turn things around for you on the court. The attitude and spirit that he brought onto the court always made me want to play tennis no matter what kind of day I was having. The amount of dedication and commitment he gave to this team was astounding. He could have cut everybody that didn't make varsity and just sent them on their way. Instead, he took the time and the liberty to hold a practice for all the people that didn't make varsity, and he'd be there on his Friday afternoons just trying to get people to improve their tennis game. I think that's an amazing amount of commitment and dedication. Um, I'd also like to question what the athletic program means by going in another direction because the only other possible direction we can go in is down from where we've gone because we just had an amazing season. And if we can't get a reason as to why the firing took place, I just have to assume that it was unjust. Bill took time for me separately to help me improve my serve. 
a part of my game, and I'll always be grateful for that, and I would not be the player that I am right now without his help. We've all formed such amazing player-coach relationships with him, and he knows all of our playing styles so well, and we just can't get that kind of chemistry with anybody else. It's just irreplaceable. Um, I don't think anybody outside the TAM tennis community realized how big of a toll this would take on us. He's been coaching here for 14 years, and without any warning, he just gets taken away from us. Are we just supposed to go down without a fight? Like, what is expected of us? Not to mention, the boys are about to start what could be an amazing season for them as well, but now they may be deprived of that because they're lacking one of the best coaches at TAM. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Hannah Periana. Six months ago, I was completely new to this state. I had no friends and wanted to become a part of this community. You can only imagine how excited I was when I heard about the tennis team. However, I was a bit late to tryouts and couldn't and joined a few weeks later, thanks to Bill's welcoming attitude. After I joined, I was welcomed by this amazing family of tennis players and, was not, and, couldn't, be, and couldn't be happier of what I found. This act of kindness reflects the caring, respectful person Bill is. He has time and time again shown his commitment and dedication to this team, leading us to winning MCALs and NCS, getting, getting us on the courts, sunshine or rain. Bill taught us not just how to work as a team, how to play harder each year. There is no one better than Bill to teach us. He's gone on 14 years being the best coach he can. Why we stop, why we stop now is a question I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Hi. Tabitha Saunders, and um, I was on the TAM tennis team. Um, and when I first tried out um, for the TAM tennis team, I had no skills. Bill had no reason to let me on or give me a chance, but he did. He believed in me, and he put trust in me from square one, and I felt like I really had a friend if it wasn't for Bill, I would have never become the tennis player and person I am today. <sighs> Bill would encourage me to be as strong as I possibly could be. And I have not had an experience like that at TAM where a teacher or instructor or coach has ever talked to me like that. And I, I'm just upset. I don't know why this happened. I don't know why it should happen. And Bill has the biggest heart you'll ever know. He, he'll, he'll laugh with you. He'll teach you. He'll, he'll be there for you. And most importantly, he'll believe in you. And I do not think it makes sense that he was let go. And I think it's unfair that you have taken away from future tennis players the ability to have the same bond with him that we all did. Because looking back in a decade or so, in high school, we will think about the memories we had with Bill on the courts. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, hi, my name is Gabrielle Planowski, and I am a freshman at TAM. Um, Bill is an exuberant, gregarious, effervescent, strict, and very professional coach, and honestly, it makes no sense as to why he was fired. Um, Bill is so kind, and not only that, but he is an amazing coach, and he not only taught us or is like teaching us how to be amazing tennis players, but he has also taught us many life lessons. Um, such as dedication, communication, and responsibility. And these are very, very important life lessons that we will use throughout our whole lifetimes. And um, Bill's work ethic was maybe the most prominent attribute about him. And regardless of whether it was raining or if the power was out, he would always host an amazing practice or um, try to host um, an amazing game when it was raining. Um, Bill pushes us um, hard on the tennis courts and he, he um, taught us the importance of hard work. 
and um, as a freshman, I was really nervous to become part of the TAM High community. However, Bill made me feel like I was welcome at TAM and made me part of the tennis family by making me laugh a lot and also helping me with my top spin and really improving my game. And um, when we first heard about Bill getting fired, we thought it was a joke, and that just shows how much, um, like how hard of a worker Bill really is. And um, I'm sure that TAM and the TAM district would want students to thrive both in the classroom and on the tennis courts. So um, that said, um, please bring back Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hi. Um, my name is Sophia Kedawat, and I'm currently the cap, or I was the captain of the girls' tennis team. I've been on the team for the past four years, and I, like many others, came to this team with virtually no skills whatsoever um, in terms of actual tennis. Um, and I think that Bill has really been the definition of an exemplary coach, not to me, but to the whole team. He's always gone above and beyond um, to be a mentor for everyone and not just the people at the top of the team. For me, this team has been more than an after-school activity. It's been a family, and ben has, Bill has been a big part of why that um, it's been such a close bond between us all. Um, he's changed all our lives and completely transformed my high school experience from being somewhat mediocre to being amazing. Um, he's instilled real team values in all of us that include time management, camaraderie, and dedication that we'll hopefully carry for the rest of our lives. I know that I will fondly remember my time on the team uh, as a transformative and uh, constructive time because of who Bill was and because of what he did for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Genevieve Durham, and I'm a junior at TAM High. Excuse me, sorry, I'm a little sick. Um, and I've known Bill Walshauer for many years due to my sister playing on the tennis team as well. I want to start off with yes. Bill does follow the rule book very closely, which I believe is great. But he truly wants the best for our team and has put us before himself, like staying past his hours of varsity to play with the second team full of beginners. He has built the tennis program to where it is today winning MCALs and NCS in Division I tennis. This comes with his productive practices, which I have seen no admin check out enough to make a final decision about Bill, with faraway tournaments that Bill has admitted us into like Fresno and Logan, we have become a strong team, along with meeting other coaches who laugh at Bill's jokes as well. Many people do not know about our achievements in the program well, but that was fine with our coach Bill, who taught everyone and brought joy to the game and was always there to talk about how to improve our love for the sport with our crazy lives. Bill, through his 13 years of coaching, has made some mistakes, but come on, he has dedicated so much time and energy for the best of our team. I question the process of this in this system and how captains like me were not consulted on this decision. Yes, there is background occurrences, but I can assure you that this other direction is nowhere but down for this program. We have gone so far up and improved with Bill's knowledge, love, and energy for the sport, which would be very difficult to find again. Personally, Bill has been a key part to my favorite part of Tamil Pius High School, the tennis program. Yes, I have love for the sport, of course, but Bill has stayed past hours to work with my serves and my game. In the beginning of the season, I was coming off, his, off of another season with doubles play, and my singles game was not at its best. He worked with me and had patience in my ch for my change to singles and has been nothing but encouraging. It meant a lot, especially in times of stress, for someone to put effort, effort into my game even when, I'm, even when I'm having off days. He has made me happy to come to practice, even with these days. I hope this decision is rethought and we can follow this message of TAM unity that is promoted so greatly. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alyssa Broad, and I'm a junior at TAM High. I've been doing TAM tennis for two years. Bill has had an incredible influence on TAM's tennis program. He has impacted my tennis ability immensely. I started out my freshman year, and I ended up making the second team. 
Even though I wasn't in the starting group, I still felt just as a part of Tam Tennis. Bill helped me with my skills and patiently taught me how to play with his immense passion for tennis. He stays until it gets dark and works well after what is required for him as a coach. Bill also helped me to build my confidence, and I'm happy to say that who I am as a player is thanks to him. As a junior, I am now on the first team and enjoy participating in matches. Because of Bill's attention and care to every player who shows interest in tennis, I was able to advance my tennis and play the sport that I love, regardless of my talent. Bill has created not one, not two, but three different teams. He genuinely cares in developing players over their high school careers instead of cutting them. I appreciate everything that he has sacrificed for us as players and as a school. There is no one that deserves this job more than him. This past season, he led us to a win in MCAL and NCS. Firing him right after a great season of coaching and playing just doesn't seem right. This signals to him that his commitment and countless extra hours to improve our game isn't seen as valuable to our school. Suddenly firing him leads people to jump to conclusions and assume things about his character that just aren't true. It isn't fair to him and it isn't fair to the players and parents as we're jumping into a new season soon with no coach and no justification for why our beloved coach was suddenly taken away from us. Also, as the captains, we met with our principal to talk about the firing of our coach. And during that meeting, our principal was talking in circles and told us that change is good. What doesn't make sense to us is why we're going in a different direction after we just had one of the most successful seasons in the history of TAM tennis. Please bring our coach back. Thank you. Hi, my name is Yurila Kara, and um, I'm a junior at TAM. Next year, I'm going to be a captain. Um, I just wanted to say I okay. I moved here um, to Salcedo as a freshman, and I just came to a new school, so I didn't know anybody. And like my mom said, I got an email from Coach Bill to say go try out the team, you know, see how it fits because I did play tennis. And um, without knowing anyone before, I just felt so nervous. I came onto the courts. It, it, it was just absolutely terrifying. And I've got to say that the one thing, the only thing that really helped me transition to come to TAM was playing on that tennis team. I found such a great community, and it was all completely facilitated by Bill. I never really felt nervous after that. I just, it, it just felt like my new home. I love playing tennis, and <laughs> Bill was just there for all of us. Um, I'd also just like to point out a specific experience that I had where he really you know, just helped me in, in my tennis career. Um, this season, I just uh, became the number one for our team, and um, I had to play against our rival, Branson, and I played um, the girl who was in the top of our league. I, um, I lost to her previously, and out of the three times I've played her, <laughs> I've lost, but it's fine. I was going to try again, and I was <laughs> really hoping to beat her. Uh, before I stepped out on the court, I talked to Bill. I was like, what can I do? And him as a coach, he was just like, you know, just be there. Do your thing. You know, you have a, like, a very unique game style. Just play it. And um, I won the first set. There's three sets in um, tennis. And I won the first set. And <laughs> it really felt great. It was absolutely amazing. And Bill just talking me through it. He, he literally led me to that victory. Uh, I ended up losing the second set. It was a bit tight, and then after the tiebreaker, I did lose 10-7, but that's okay because I won the first set, and nobody ever, and, and it was the first time someone got a set from her, and I just felt so proud from that moment, and I, Bill just guided me there, and I'm just so disappointed for next year that if I have to play her again, who's going to be talking to me through that? How am I going to get that set again? Or two sets, you know, beat her. It's It's just it's so sad to think that next year as a captain I'm not gonna have him there like just bring back Bill <laughs> consistency, consistency. thank you for your comments hi my name is Sophia Kerner and I'm a junior at Tam High and I've been a member of the tennis team for three years I just want to begin by saying that I would definitely not be the tennis player I am today without Bill he not only acted as a role model for me because of his dedication to tennis and each and every player on the team, no matter what their ranking was on the ladder, but he also has taught me perseverance, hard work, dedication, and the ability to believe in myself, even at my lowest moments. For example, in the beginning of the season, I lost my tennis swing. I was unable to hit and made me feel very frustrated. 
I started to doubt my tennis abilities and thought that I wouldn't be able to hit again. Through this tough time, Bill was there for me. He gave me really good advice and, me, and made me feel a lot better about the situation. He believed in me, giving me um, pointers about what I needed to do in order to get back to being the player I used to be. It took a lot of patience and commitment, but I was finally able to hit again. Throughout Bill's dedication to me as a player, I would definitely not be where I am today. In addition, Bill put an incredible amount of time into this team. Although he was balancing work and his personal life, Bill showed up to coach every day, even when he didn't have to. He even devoted his time to creating an entire second team for players who didn't make the first one so they can have the opportunity to play and improve their tennis skills. There is this one day that I remember when only three or four of the second team players showed up. Instead of canceling the practice altogether, Bill stayed with them because he was committed to making sure everyone got a chance to play. Bill was not only an amazing coach, but also an amazing person in general. He was so passionate about coaching the boys and girls tennis team, and it was clear that it made him very happy. I really hope you all can see how much Bill means, not only to me, but also the rest of the team. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Mason Marks, and I'm currently a senior, and I'm a captain of the boys' tennis team, one of three. Uh, before, before high school, I played tennis, played tennis since the age of four, um, but moving to Marin around fourth grade and playing tennis uh, as a local kid, I heard a lot about Coach Bill and his success and his, the program he'd created. Um, and I was super excited to be a part of the program once I was a freshman in high school. And Bill has made a huge impact on my life and my tennis game. I've learned so much from him, and uh, this great success has come through the team aspect and individually. Uh, we have won MCAL championships. I've won NCS individual, MCAL individual championships. Uh, it's been a great, been a great run. Um, but as now uh, a new chapter, uh, as a captain and my two other co-captains, uh, we're trying to make our season happen because this has happened in the middle of our seasons. And the girls had a great season under Coach Bill, and I was hoping for the same thing with um, our season. So I set up a, a meeting with our principal and athletic director. They never actually reached out to me or my captains uh, about the matter, um, even though I'd been involved in tennis all years and a big proponent of the program. Uh, They said it'd be a great transition. Uh, they were excited for it. And I, sitting down with them with my other two captains, uh, basically it seemed as if they were not knowing where to turn. Um, the athletic director is desperately reaching out to people, trying to find someone by February 10th to become our coach. Um, they're asking us to step in and do more than what we should be doing to try and help, which I'm fine with. but. You know, it's, it's their responsibility to hire someone and find someone that will help make this program better. Um, and also, this we have lots of freshmen that are coming in from our team. We had lots of seniors graduate last year, and a lot of them are very strong players and will hopefully take us to another MCAL title, which is our main goal. And the beginning of the season, uh, before the season start, they were asking me questions. I knew how to answer them because I knew how Bill ran and he had such a smooth program. And now I don't really know where to turn because I don't know what's going to happen. And I just hope that uh, we're going to be able to turn this program around and they're going to be able to find someone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm moving this up just because that's my son and I'm much taller than he is. Um, so my name is Jeff Marks. Um, uh, Mason is my son who just spoke. Um, I, I actually grew up in Mill Valley, and I won't bore you with details about myself, but I played baseball at TAM many years ago from 1987 through 91. The point in sharing that is I understand the impact a high school coach can have, and obviously coaches take on different styles. They engage with the kids differently. They motiv motivate them differently, and I had a great experience many years ago. And what I've seen, and I think clearly what all the kids and parents that have spoken have shared, is that Bill's had an extremely positive impact 
from a, a results perspective, uh, personal uh, engagement with the kids, motivation. So it clearly was less about just having uh, somebody with a, a pulse standing on the court feeding balls or trying to motivate kids that really didn't know what he was doing. It was somebody who was really had thought through his approach and refined his approach. And it's something that, you know, clearly with, with the folks in the room tonight, they're all sharing something quite consistent from one person to the next and little variations on kind of what the results and the impact has been. Um, so my sentiment is, is quite consistent with what people have already shared. Um, I think it's important, though, with some of the comments that Mason just made, which is the decision's been made. Clearly, people aren't happy with it. Clearly, don't, people don't understand why this decision's been made. Uh, clearly, it doesn't reflect positively or favorably on Bill from a, just a personal character perspective, uh, which, is, which is discouraging and disappointing as a parent who's seen, I think, the good work he's done, not just for my son, but for all of the boys' and girls' teams, and uh, I think the leadership capabilities that he's really instilled in each of them. Um, but it's the lack of a plan. I mean, I think we all, as, as Young adults and adults know the importance in anything we do in life in having a plan. That's what we teach our kids. That's what educators teach our kids in being prepared and having a plan. And, you know, it's, as Mason said a moment ago, you know, and as a parent trying to push him the right direction, engage. Ask the question. If your season is supposed to start in two, three weeks and you're supposed to have tryouts, push the administration to give you not so much answers on why Bill. We don't expect that. I mean, it would be nice to know. But... Let's see what this transition plan is, because I think that from what, I, what I've seen as being a parent of a player on the team for four years, um, I, I, and I'll keep, me, I'll keep, keep me honest here, folks, but I, don't, I personally, and I've been to a lot of games, maybe not every game or match, but I have not seen uh, our athletic director, uh, Christina Amorosa, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, at any of the matches. Um, I don't think I've ever seen JC Farr at any of the matches. And there's a couple of reasons why. I would assume it's A, it's on cruise control because they don't have to do a damn thing because Bill had this program dialed. Now they're just wondering how are we going to manage this? Or they simply didn't care and they would walk by and go to see what was going on in the football field or the soccer field. So there you go. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael, Hall Michael Halloran. Um, I haven't been as active a parent as Mason's dad in terms of the tennis program, but I have two children, John Halloran and Annabelle Halloran, who's here with me tonight, who've gone through the program with Bill. Having seen a lot of coaches, he's really one of the most exemplary coaches that I've ever encountered in my life. Um, about a month ago, we were at the celebratory season-ending dinner, and it was one of the most inspiring things to just see how excited these kids were to be around their coach, how much they've learned. They gave speeches about it. So it's really been both a highlight as well as this being a real uh, source of frustration to see how this has unfolded. I just felt obligated to be here, even though I haven't been as active as some of the other parents. Um, another thing that hasn't been said is Bill sends about 1,000 emails <laughs> per season. He's so committed. We, we laugh about it, but you know he's been really inspiring as a person and as a coach. Um, and I know that it, there are limitations around what can be said about why with this decision. I understand that. What I would just end by, because I have brief remarks, is that I think there's a lot about this world that's discouraging right now in terms of political divisions, budget issues with the district. And I know we can't solve all of these, but you know I think we could restore hope in, at TAM and a lot of, within a lot of these kids. Uh, just if we could revisit this, because it would be really nice to read a really upbeat uh, headline in the TAM News and maybe even the IJ over this decision, and I think that's why this community has come out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Susan Kuiper. I'm Bill's wife. I don't know much about tennis, but I do know, and I'm going to be short, I know Bill has integrity. He has commitment, and he's kind. One of my earliest memories is when my mother said, Susie, remember the golden rule. And I don't feel like any of this reflects the golden rule that we all strive to live by. Bring back Bill. He deserves it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Hi, I'm Paul Stiff. I'm an assistant coach on the tennis team for the last two years. My daughter's been on the team uh, since being a freshman. She was a senior and a captain this year. And I just want to impress upon uh, the board the commitment that Bill 
makes for the team. I'm a little bit behind the scenes, and so I do see the 1,000 emails. I actually see the 2,000 emails. The man puts in probably four to six hours every day, five days a week. A couple of other examples. Uh, during the summer, there was fundraising. My daughter and the team members were helping uh, raise money to support the team. And uh, they decided to have a tournament. And the kids kind of don't have all the tools to put together a tournament. Bill, I mean, in the middle of his summer, put in his time and effort to work with the UTR site put out emails to friends and connections, and we ran a really successful Saturday tournament for the girls in the middle of summer to raise money for the, for the team during the season to fund a trip to Fresno, California, not the nicest place in the world, to have a three-day tournament in 100-degree weather. Bill is committed. He's been there day in, day out. It's just remarkable to see this. On top of the commitment, the really thing that is neat is for high school kids to get a sense of the teamwork that he instills on the tennis team. If you know anything about tennis, it's a very individual sport. It's actually a pretty tricky individual sport. A lot of mental uh, fortitude is needed, and he really brings it together and makes it a team, team sport. And those, those team dynamics he's created through a number of different traditions, uh, team dinners before big matches, um, the end of the year uh, 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 dinner he has, and all of that team bonding, the kids do start to realize that that makes a difference in the results. And the results do come in both individual improvements and also team results. So we've had two undefeated seasons or nearly undefeated seasons and a bunch of uh, tournament wins uh, later in the season as well. The last part I'll say is it's a really neat environment. Uh, high school kids, when they're just starting high school, having a group of them to bond with is really important. In the tennis team for my daughter, I saw how much it helped her kind of assimilate into, into high school as a freshman. I've seen it happen over and over again as a, a coach and friends of, of my daughter. And it's just such an important period. Bill really fosters that and has really helped that. And I think it's a lot of the reason why so many people are here, because they really want to support that kind of behavior. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Larry Smith. I've been an assistant coach with Bill for the last nine years. Uh, my daughter graduated, played tennis here, went on to play college tennis as well. Um, but looking back at the program that we've created, it's really hard to replicate. I can't imagine anyone walking in right now and I see a complete dilemma of who's going to take the energy and time to incorporate. We have potentially 40 boys coming in. Uh, to play tennis right now. Uh, we've broken it up historically where Bill would stay after to make sure those kids had an opportunity to be part of a team. And I can't picture anyone in the tennis community that would put the amount of hours in right now. Now, I've, all, I've been looking at the emails and I looked at the job site to see if any of you have looked at the job site and looked at the, what their requirements are. There is no job description. Um, by the way, no one at the board or even AMO knows what the job description is. Like what has made this program popular and why has it been successful? There's no one there behind the scenes that has come out and observed it. Um, it's hours and hours of time and evaluation and, and commitment that no one even recognizes. So I'm, and now, now I'm answering for me, am I going to be the next coach? I don't have that time. I work. <laughs> Unfortunately, I work pretty hard. But you're going to be seeing someone who's going to take that place. I can't imagine anyone who has the time and the knowledge of tennis and the sport that's going to commit to the, the next round. Um, so I think you have your hands tied as to keeping this program going at any level uh, to keep it you know, at the level that it's been. But anyway, that's my input. Thank you. I'm Amy Willard from Kent Field and president of the Coalition of Sensible Taxpayers. For a year now, we've been asking you to bring public comment back to the beginning of the board meeting. We're appreciative that you did, but uh, we think that is uh, notably aligned with the, with the uh, uh, imminent parcel tax measure. That's unfortunate. Um, Decision making, so we, so here we have all these people talking about tennis. I'm right in the middle of tennis, and this may seem to be what I'm about to say to be not related, but it really is. It's all about decision making, decision making, community responsiveness, and accountability. What we are facing now is a 10-year big increase in the parcel tax 
The school has not produced a 10-year plan to justify it. Today, I received an email from a very astute financial professional who sent me his own 10-year financial plan for the district, seeing as the district hasn't made one. And uh, his, his analysis points out that enrollment is going to, to peak in a couple of years, and that if you uh, project out the other expenses uh, uh, that fall into place following a lower uh, enrollment, that the district, in fact, will have significant surpluses over much of the 10-year period if they leave the parcel tax exactly where it is. I challenge you to do a different analysis. Meanwhile, we have a false claim and the rebuttal argument, which I know was not developed by the district, but perhaps there was communication prior to the blackout period about the uh, financial future, claiming imminent insolvency of the district if this test parcel tax measure fails, and immediate firings, even though this parcel tax, the existing one, goes to 6-30-2024. You have two intervening elections as well as opportunities for special elections. That's just not true. So um, here we are in the middle of parcel tax where you need community support. You've got some real issues of decision making and trust. I strongly encourage you to address them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Reed Newlight, and I'm a senior and one of the captains of Tams Boys Tennis Team. Um, I've had Bill as a coach for over six years. During this time, Bill has not only affected my tennis game, but also my character. He has given me grit and resilience to succeed in both my athletic and academic careers. Um, on top of this, Bill consistently showed determination to Tam Tennis. He arrived before practice to set up. Uh, worked with athletes to improve their skill sets, and was always the last one to leave the courts. Um, Bill also made sure that every person at TAM who was interested in tennis had the opportunity, opportunity to pursue their passion. He managed the 30-person second team alongside the varsity team, putting in many extra hours outside of his job requirement. This caused many athletes to improve their game and gave many the hope to make the main varsity team. Having Bill was detrimental to TAM tennis success. He's a leader and mentor who unified the TAM tennis community. I truly hope this decision is given more thought. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you, board, for letting us all speak. Um, my name is Chris Bolger. I have a daughter that plays tennis for TAM. I have a son who's a freshman who will, is looking forward to playing for the boys' team this spring. Um, as you can hear, we're all here um, because we've been negatively affected by the decision to terminate Bill. Um, and we think, you know, at best this was a misguided decision, at worst it was an inappropriate decision. Um, you know, Bill, taking Bill, here's a guy that's been coaching at TAM for 14 years, by every discernible metric has been successful. Um, he's an upstanding member of the community and, you know, the way this was handled, quite frankly, was insulting to everybody. This, this is a guy who was terminated without warning, without an explanation, and frankly, without respect. Um, so, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of people here that are clearly upset. Um, and, you know, the other piece of it is we've got a group of people here, parents and players, who have invested a lot of time and energy in the TAM tennis program. And we were given absolutely no, no forewarning and no consultation, no input, other than the program's going in a different direction. And that that's nonsensical, I think. I think everybody here can, can agree with that. Um, so let's, let's, let's just take Bill. I, I just want to read here quickly the posting for the new position. And I want to cross-check it with Bill's resume. A genuine respect and caring for adolescents. Check. Knowledge of the sport. Check plus. Flexibility. Check. Previous coaching experience and certification. Check plus plus plus. Communication skills, check, minus. <laughs> and that minus is because he does, it's not that he doesn't communicate enough, it's probably because he communicates too much and he's too damn blunt. And that's probably one of the reasons that may have gotten him into trouble with whoever it got him into trouble with. Um, this guy is doing the job that some of the administrators, quite frankly, should be doing. And I think some of the administrators need to look in the mirror because that, this guy is setting up NCS, he's, as some of these other speakers have said, 
He's built a complete B team. I mean, tennis is a sport for life. It's a little bit different than some of the other sports at TAM. It's a sport that kids learn. They can play the rest of their lives. It's a very social sport. And Bill's done an unbelievable job. He's taken on extra responsibility to build a B team when he doesn't have to do that. He needs a set group of people to compete at every match. So I don't know what they're expecting here. But, what, but the ask, I think the ask here is for us to get more information. And I know some people or a person is hiding behind the veneer of privacy here and anonymity, but that's not fair. You've got a big group of people here in a very successful program by all metrics. And there's been no explanation given, you know, other than a cursory, we're going in a different direction. So, I, you know, I know it's difficult for a bureaucracy to make changes, but we're asking for that. And there's actually been a solution floated due to Bill's eminent retirement that might satisfy every party. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you have more written um, and, yeah, and you're able to. Okay. Okay. Well, feel free to feel free to send us an email. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Tania Tramp. I was one of the coaches last year. This this year, I guess. Um, and I just wanted to share. Captain. <laughs> there we go. Not coach. Okay. Anyways, one of the things that I want to share is just I came to Tam from Bolinas, so I didn't really know anybody. Um, and one of the reasons that I ended up liking tennis so much was not actually because of the sport itself, was, but because I had so many friends here and because of the atmosphere that I felt on the team that I know a lot of people have talked about. And I just want to give one little example of that. Um, the past two years, I guess, we did something called Wash Hour Wednesdays, which was every Wednesday on our Tannis Instagram, we would interview Bill and we'd ask him a different question. We asked him, what's your favorite Kardashian? What's the, the best photo that you've ever seen? You know, little things like that. And it was maybe two minutes out of our day every Wednesday, and it wasn't a big thing, but I know a lot of coaches probably wouldn't have taken the time for that, and it seemed kind of inconsequential, but it was one of the things that I think little... Little things like that just made the team such a really nice place to be, and that Bill took the time and understood the importance of that. So thank you. Thank you. And before the next speaker, one moment, I'm going to do a time check with uh, my fellow board members. I'd asked if you would mind extending the time by 45 minutes, and we still have more speakers. And would you be willing to extend it for another um, 30 minutes? Can we get a sense of how many speakers you have? I'm assuming everybody that's standing up is going to speak. In the line there, and then if there are any of you that are sitting that um, would like to speak, you're welcome to. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Lucy Stiff, and I'm also one of the past co-captains of this season. And I, even though I think everyone could go on and on about the sort of coach that Bill is and everything he's done for the team, I think that there's this one example that sort of encapsulates the kind of person that he is. And that was about um, a month ago. So every year when the season ends, we have a team dinner and it's like a two, three hour dinner. And, you know, Larry makes his pulled pork and we all have a big potluck and we, all the captains makes a pro. It's this huge um, deal. And this past year, Bill actually brought his guitar and we all <laughs> sat or stood in a circle and he all sang this song that he wrote himself and we have a video of it so I hope maybe we can show it but and we all just sort of swayed back and forth and sang along to it and I think that regardless of all you know the MCALs and NCS that we've won he's just such a kind person and I think that that sort of five minutes that he took with us to sing along and I think it's such like a funny thing but I don't know it sort of showed me and it was such a nice thing to end the year as a senior with and to, I don't know, it's just something that I think I'll remember for the rest of my life, and I'll look back on these days, and that's the one thing that I'll remember, and I think that, you know, that kind-hearted person that sat down with us and sang with us, he brings that with all of his coaching experiences, and, you know, again, I mean, he's super organized, and he puts so much thought and effort to it, but he also has a really kind side that, mm -hmm. you know, he brings with him every single day that we have a practicing game, so thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm a junior. I've played tennis for the past three years, and I'm going to be a captain next year. Like my other teammates, I was very surprised when I heard the news about Bill. I'm here because I think it's incredibly disrespectful the way that this whole thing went down. I don't know the reasons, but it seems like it could have been handled a lot better. From everything we have heard, Bill has no reason other than the school wants to go a different direction. It seems like someone who has coached so many successful teams should have been given more reasons than that. The timing of this is especially hard on the boys' team that is starting in the spring, and I feel bad for them having to start the season without a coach, especially when the new coach isn't going to put in nearly as much time or effort as our 
as Bill did. After the news came out, my fellow captains and I went to talk to J.C. Farr, and he would not give us any reasons or justification for what happened. If there was a good reason, he sh we should not have to speculate and think of the worst. It seems that we owe our coach Bill that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Larkin Peterson. I'm a sophomore at TAM right now. I just wanted to talk about how understanding Bill is. Tennessee is usually classified as a really competitive sport, and I badly sprained my ankle in the beginning of the season, was out for six weeks of the season. And I used to play soccer, and the club season is at the same time as the tennis season. Bill was very understanding last year about letting me go from practice early to soccer practice and missing some of like Logan matches to go to a soccer game. And he also understood a lot about soccer seasons now, which is back to back. So I had to get early release to like go. So he's understanding about like allowing me to go and try out for soccer. And he's just a very understanding person. And he and after I sprained my ankle he allowed me to come right back into it and like play again, which is very nice because of how long I was out. And he's just and he's one of the best coaches I've had and he's a very understanding person. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, my name is Sammy Nichols, and I am a sophomore at Tam. It's my, I had my second season on the tennis team. Um, just like some little things about Bill that made the tennis team like my favorite part of the year. Um, when there weren't enough people to warm up in pairs, Bill would warm up with a player and always give them little tips and you know have fun with it and kind of treat you like an equal but also as a person, you know, who he can help improve their tennis game because he just loves the sport so much and wants to help people. Um, Bill always made these ridiculous jokes that just made us all roll our eyes, but, you know, you, like, you love it. Like, it just makes Bill the coach and person that he is. Um, Bill's dedication was inspiring to everyone on the team and made us want to be dedicated to the team, which is part of what made it so great and what – contributed to a lot of our success um, and this year Bill made not two but three teams to make sure that everyone had a place where they could feel comfortable improving and playing tennis like at whatever level they were um, and I know this decision is a personnel matter and people you know can't comment on it I believe it was unfair that Bill and the tennis community wasn't given a reason for this, but I understand that there are rules. But if anyone has the power to reverse this decision, they should definitely do that because there's no reason to leave this team flailing before the boys' season to find a coach. And no coach could ever fill Bill's shoes or put in as much time and effort as he did. But the TAM district owes it to the tennis community to find someone who can lead the team and the players that bill has groomed will do their best and ask ourselves what would bill do and play the best season that we can without bill but keeping in mind the many lessons that he has taught us over the years thank you thank you hi my name is gracie cameron i'm a current senior at tam high and a former co-captain uh, for this past tennis season um, not only is the TAM tennis program strong because of Bill, but the community is strong. Like someone said before, tennis is a very individual sport, but Bill has been able to foster an incredibly welcoming, supportive community of hardworking teammates, teaching us both tennis and important life lessons. Tonight we have heard from player upon player on how the team is what made TAM an amazing experience and how they were able to grow as both a person and a player. That is what makes the tennis team so special, and this is not something that can be replaced. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Katarina King. I'm actually a lacrosse parent here, um, and I came tonight to just listen to um, the tennis parents and the tennis family here and wasn't going to say anything, but I'm really compelled to come forward and um, tell you that this is a problem throughout ham athletics. Um, I have two high school students right now and a seventh grader. Both of them play lacrosse. I'm the team parent for the girls lacrosse team. Um, and I've been one for the, this is my fourth year. Um, this is what I can say about hearing and being here tonight is that you've truly fired the wrong coach. We're facing beginning our lacrosse season with a truly 
toxic coach that the team as a whole provided ample proof and evidence of bad coaching and inappropriate conduct with several girls on the team. Ammo appeared to listen to them and actually do her job, which you know is very rare these days um, from what I hear from a lot of us. And she actually opened the position up at the end or right before Thanksgiving break. We assumed that was a firing and we were very relieved. The parents were relieved, the players were relieved. We went into the holidays actually celebrating for a change and going into the season with a lot of relief and enthusiasm for what could be an MCAL win for us this year. Um, we found out one week ago today that Ammo and JC had gone behind the captain's backs and certainly the TAM parent leadership's back and, f and hired him back on their own accord without really, in, my, in our opinion, as parents and players, really looking at the facts that we had provided them and they had provided them for what was not right about this particular individual. It's been elevated to the district and it now lays in your hands to do the right thing. And I'm gonna echo these parents, bring Bill back and please permanently fire Coach Kendrick. Are there any more comments? This is the last chance. No more public comments on items not on the agenda. Um, our next agenda item, this is that we just now close public comment, and the next item will be the student trustee reports, but I'd like to take a three minute recess to allow those of you that would like to proceed um, to leave so that, because we know it'll be a little bit noisy for all, but I also want to thank you very, very much for coming out tonight. We'll now reconvene. So the next agenda, the next agenda item um, is the trustee reports, student trustee reports. And would anyone in particular like to start? Kara, would you like to start? Okay. Um, so as you notice, talk of the tennis team has definitely been prominent on campus um, throughout. They've just they'll talk to anyone who they can talk to. So. Um, yeah, if you didn't notice. Um, our student senate is gonna hold its first meeting on January 29th. A survey was sent out to the entire community, coaches, club presidents, and major programs on campus, such as Link Crew, AIM, Mock Trial, and such. Um, leadership next year is planned to move to a class period, so this is a way of um, hopefully finding a way to get voices of students who won't be able to take that class due to other equipment commitments, such as like if you're an AIM leadership, you're not gonna be able to take both because of conflicts. Can I interrupt? Is, is it possible to ask the people outside to just kind of move away from the door? Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. Yeah. That's my son. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's talk, I'm not 100% sure if it's official yet, but um, throughout the past couple years they're trying to move leadership. Right now it's a zero period going on four days a week starting at seven. I'm trying to move it to it being a class period to increase um, diversity and just kind of the kind of students that can be in the class since getting to school at seven is not the easiest for everyone. Um, but that means programs such as drama and AIM and other, even like TAM News, other, if you take another class, you're gonna, it's gonna be very difficult to take both leadership and a different program. So we designed a student senate to try and get those voices from those programs so that their voices aren't, they're still being heard on campus. Um, we looked at Drake's constitution last year and other, um, student senate constitutions to try and come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so we're holding the first meeting on January 29th, trying to figure out the kinks this year so that next year it can be put in place. Um, our winter rally is next Friday, the 24th. Um, our winter one acts um, with underclassmen drama students start tonight and are playing through the 24th. Um, if Tam draw, I did drama my freshman year and it's definitely fun to get on the main stage. Um, all my freshmen and Link are all excited about it. It's definitely a nice way to kind of see um, the other side of drama that you don't see in their main stage productions because um, they've been working on these for the past couple months with upperclassmen directors. So it's kind of a fun way to see a bridge between um, the different grades. Um, after the Tam and Drake basketball game, there or in between the girls varsity and boys varsity, there was a unified um, sports game with um, our Mr. Lovejoy's class, which um, I did not attend, but from all of them, they're very excited about it and I heard good things. Um, uh, they just postponed it, but SOAR is working with BSU and students of color 
trying to figure out a panel to be held after school one day at the Mill Valley Community Center um, to discuss kind of like the lack of diversity in schools and throughout, pro um, throughout programs, especially at TAM, um, which we're looking forward to. Um, it was supposed to, be, supposed to be on January 22nd, but it's being postponed to sometime in February due to scheduling conflicts. Um, and SOAR is attending its next training on January 17th. And our girls' soccer program is currently undefeated in MCALS, which has kind of been a big turnaround from where the program was four years ago. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so when one of our last meetings, um, we discussed the, the TAM news issue and um, efforts that were made oh, right. um, around that and um, efforts that the TAM news was going to do. And I think one of the efforts um, that was being made was um, talking about writing editorials about the police activity that had taken place um, in Red City. And I just wanted to follow up and see what efforts the board um, or the editorial board or authors uh, might have taken regarding regarding TAM's own presentation of the cover, right? Um, and so increasing voice or representation in the community instead of looking outside the community. Did, were there any actions taken by the TAM News whether to, um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot. I thought, I thought that was just actually discussed during the meeting here. I thought maybe. No, Maybe I'm getting my meetings talked, mixed up. I thought you all, you actually did discuss no, they that talked you were about, going to do that also. I guess I misunderstood. I thought that was, anyway, go ahead. Well, they talked about that there was an editorial going to be written about the police action. Right. But I wondered if there were any editorials written about the TAM, the TAM news action. cover yeah. and or giving opportunities to people in the community to express their reactions to the cover. Um, so, yeah, in the reprint of the issue that had the insensitive cover, there was... Um, the letter to the editor was replaced with a lengthy um, kind of letter of apology. It was the same one online. Uh -huh. um, we chose not to publish it again or bring the cover up again in kind of hopes of we didn't want to keep bringing it up for students. Um, we did publish an editorial about um, the events that happened in Marin City, including, and there was also an in-depth news coverage um, of the events that happened um, with the raid. Um, kind of focusing more on that um, through talking with students who are residents of Marin City. Um, teachers on campus who were of comforting those students during those hard times. What we heard back from students who were in TAM News, not in TAM News, was that dwelling on the cover wasn't really effective for them, but rather trying to focus our efforts on talking about what happened in Marin City um, because they felt more hurt from their classmates not knowing what had happened um, on during that raid, the police arrests, um, rather than the cover, um, was my understanding. And it's kind of the consensus that the editorial board came to. Um, we also um, are continuing our outreach program with MLK and Bayside this year, um, where we bring them in for uh, eighth graders. They come in for, they come in three or four times, and we actually produce a magazine with them to try and expose them to what TAM News is like, so in hopes that they'll come and join us. And we've seen our um, student population just changed a lot, and we have a much diverse staff, and it's growing. We're possibly gonna have three advanced journalism classes, considering last year there were 20 kids in advanced journalism and projected to have almost 80 or 90 um, from what kids are saying. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Um, so at Drake, uh, this Thursday and Friday, we have our course workshops, which is when students get to see um, uh, short, the teachers do short uh, introductions to what their courses are like so students can see what courses are like to take for next year. Um, and then also our open house is next Thursday on the 23rd. It's from 6.30 until 8. And something we're doing new with this open house this year is usually it's just a time for parents to um, meet teachers and talk to them and also for incoming 8th graders to go and um, hear about classes, but we're adding to it this year a course workshop sort of um, selection for the parents so that they can hear about courses that their students might be taking in future years. Um, so that's something we're trying out this year, so we'll see how that goes. Um, also, there's the unified game, which I also heard went very well. Everyone was very happy about it. Um, and then also, so, Drake is no longer doing the um, throughout the year eighth grade tours anymore um, just because of the increased population. It's 
starting to be disruptful for classes. Um, but what we are doing is tomorrow on Wednesday, there is a sort of one day of an eighth grade tour. Um, and so that is going to be run by ASB and PR and their eighth graders are coming over for the school day on buses and um, ASB and PR are gonna show them around the school and show them elective classes and um, talk to them about Drake. So that's happening tomorrow. Um, and then finally, uh, Drake alumni, Will Salivary, who um, is at Yale now. He is in, a, it's the oldest underclassmen a cappella group, so it's just freshmen and sophomores, um, called the Spizwinks. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> they did, had a concert last Saturday at Drake that was very well attended. And they also did a performance during lunch that Drake students could just come to for free. Um, that was in the little theater. And then for the last 20 minutes of lunch, they just went by the senior tree um, and uh, finished out their performance there and attracted a really big crowd. And they're, I mean, very good. I went and saw both of the um, concerts and they're very good. And it was cool to see what Drake alumni are doing. Very nice, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tamascal had its back to school assembly last Friday. It was planned by the past by the Pathways program. It consisted of two movies and two guest speakers who either helped produce the movies or were subjects in the like documentaries. Um, it was held in the Raphael Theater in Centerville. And for the most part, students were required to drive themselves. I think that caused some complications, especially for underclassmen. Uh, there was a way that they could contact Sue in the office and they could create carpools, but to my understanding, none of that happened. Uh, less than a third of Tamascal's population showed up. That was a big heartbreak for the staff. I think one of the biggest problems with that is the um, permission slips are emailed to students halfway through our winter break, and, and then students are asked to come back to Tamascal during their break to return the permission slips. This is a horrible system. I think permission slips should be given to students during finals week and then students should be forced to turn them in before they get to leave or before they're given their yearbook as it is the end of the year. Because how else are we going to get students get their permission slips in? Having them emailed halfway through the, their break where they're probably on vacation and then having them drive in is not working. Have you, uh, maybe this is more appropriate to discuss with the administration. At, yeah. at, at, I don't think we need more information on this here, okay. but I want to give a chance for you to work that out with the Completely. school site. Thank you. What also was an issue is the Q&A on the first movie went too long and that went into the lunchtime. So students were only left with 15 minutes to eat lunch and then prepare themselves for the next movie. So that was one of the biggest complaints I was getting is that they just didn't have enough time to get their energy out or just to eat their lunch. Uh, overall, the movies were very good. I think they were well chosen. It was uh, sort of a, it's hard, it's hard to explain. It's a, a, it was a engineering movie about planes and then that one was less welcoming, but the other one was a movie about ex-convicts, which was uh, very well received, especially as it relates to here because we're near San Quentin. So I think it was, movies have always been part of Temescal's assembly, but normally we've just walked to the lark. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, this assembly <laughs> definitely could have been improved on. As it is only our second day of school, uh, we have a lot to do. We have about 20 new students. That has not disrupted class sizes, uh, luckily, but also the number should be dropping in a few weeks as our sort of school does. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lauren. Um, Redwood Leadership is putting the finishing touches on the winter formal, which will be on January 24th. That's the first time that'll be happening at Redwood. Um, after homecoming was canceled due to power outages. Um, so leadership is sort of planning if they're gonna do a spirit week and just ways to raise awareness for that. Um, because it works how if you bought a ticket for homecoming, you'll get in for free to the winter formal. Um, so just trying to get out, spread the word about that. Um, we're also having open house coming up soon on January 30th, like Maddie was saying. 
Um, we're doing a very similar format, more geared towards um, incoming freshmen and their parents. Um, so it'll be more like course workshops, which we hold every year during smart period in January. Um, so we'll be changing that um, for open house. Leadership is brainstorming their next service initiative. Some of the complaints we got from the family house fundraiser were just that it wasn't quite local enough. Students wanted to maybe get involved with the organization but felt like that was too far. Um, so leadership is responding to those, hoping to do a more local organization like in Marin County where maybe students can donate money but then maybe ongoing philanthropy work with them, um, which I think would be a really interesting thing to keep going. Uh, Redwood is also considering moving leadership to a class period, like Kara was saying, to increase diversity um, and just the types of people that are in leadership as it's supposed to be representative of our whole student body. Um, and they did try to do this last year and were, fet were met with a lot of backlash. Um, so they're still trying. They haven't announced quite yet, but people do have to start choosing scheduling. Um, so I think they will announce that soon. The Redwood Bark is working with SOAR. Um, over the next few months, they're going to be doing a video docu-series project. Um, and the Bark got a bunch of new video equipment from the foundation that they're going to be using. Um, and now that SOAR is also a, a class at Redwood, they're going to be um, working at the same time because they're at the same period. Um, so yeah, the Bark's very excited about that. Um, hoping to expand the video section. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate those reports. It's always helpful. Thank you. Go ahead. Can I just uh, to give a comment on the leadership uh, potentially moving that you know site decision or, or whatever to move that within um, the class day? Um, and I know change is hard, uh, but I teach at a school where leadership is in the day, and it has tremendously um, increased diversity. So it is right. Whereas we do have a zero period. Well, thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to trustee considerations, except the district's financial audit report. And we'll let Corbett Elson. All right, good evening. I'm actually going to be very brief and make an introduction and hand it off. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Sarah Feeler from the auditing firm Christy White, uh, who is going to be presenting a brief synopsis of the 85 page audit report. Uh, Sarah has uh, been with, I've worked with her for the past two years and I've enjoyed working with her. Her constructive feedback has been very informative to me and our team. I'm going to hand it over to her, who will present her report. Um, and then we'll obviously answer some questions at the end. Uh, I just want to put out there that uh, Sarah also does, does have a similar commitment tonight at another district. Um, so I appreciate the board bringing her up earlier this evening. Thank Sarah. you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here to present the audit report. Maybe for you can wait one moment. Oh, sure. It looks like yeah. the student trustees are leaving. Have you guys all decided that you all leave at, at the same time at 730? I don't know. I mean, every every night you leave it. We'll have to talk about that because I'm not sure why you. I mean, we'll have to talk about that another time. Yeah, you leave right when we're getting started. But thank you, Lauren, for staying. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today to present the audit report for the year ending June 30, 2019. Um, and just to highlight. Um, with the audit report, it's always great to keep in mind the responsibility of the school district when it comes to the audit and the financials and the auditor's responsibility. So the district's responsibility is to effectively um, design and implement internal controls. The financial statements are also the responsibility of the district. The district prepares their unaudited actuals that the board approves. Um, and the district is responsible for preparing and managing the budget throughout the year. The auditor's responsibility is to opine or issue an opinion on the reasonable assurance of the financial statements and the relevant disclosures. Um, and the audit opinion um, does not address the financial condition of the district. However, if the district had you know, a, a very um, drastic or concern um, related, the, related to the, the financial condition, that would be um, noted. Um, and um, just to uh, highlight, we issued um, an unmodified opinion, which is the best opinion that can be issued. Um, and, the, um, and that's our independent auditor's report opinion. 
and you'll see that it's um, we've kind of highlighted here on page one um, the opinion paragraph that states kind of in summary in our opinion the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the respective financial position of the governmental activities each major fund and the aggregate remaining fund information for Tamil Pius Union High School District as of June 30 2019 and um, an unmodified opinion, just to note, it's the best opinion that you can get. It's also, in short, kind of known as a clean opinion. Um, we also review internal controls um, over financial reporting. Although we don't issue an opinion as to the effectiveness of the internal controls, we are required to disclose if we have noted any um, significant deficiencies or material weaknesses that rise to the level of needing to be reported to the board. And there were none. Um, with our audit, we also issue an opinion on federal awards and the compliance um, over the federal awards um, that the district receives. Um, and the program that we tested um, to reach our opinion was the special education cluster. And we issued an unmodified opinion again with no material weaknesses nor any um, um, significant deficiencies. And the last opinion that we issue is over state awards. And I've listed here the relevant state compliance areas that are applicable for the district. And you'll see there's kind of a wide scope of the um, different areas that we are required to audit to reach our state award opinion. And so we again issued an unmodified opinion on state awards. However, we did note a significant deficiency, um, but we did not note any material weaknesses. And next, we disclose any audit findings, um, current year and also prior year follow-up. So there was one audit finding that we noted for the 2018-19 year, and this was related to comprehensive school safety plans. Um, and we sampled a selection of comprehensive school safety plans um, that the district had in place. We did not test all school sites. Um, and the issue that we noted is um, there's a requirement that they are approved by March 1st, and these plans were approved shortly after that. There's not a question cost for the finding as, it, as they were approved, um, but our recommendation is to be in line with that March 1st deadline. Is that the significant? That's the significant deficiency, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the last part of our audit report, the, the final pages of the report, um, we're required to um, disclose if there's been any, if there were prior year findings, um, if the corrective action has been implemented. So in the prior year, there was a finding related to um, Cash and County Treasury, um, unduplicated LCFF pupil count, and um, attendance reporting. And we're happy to report that all of those corrective actions have been implemented. And you'll see that those findings have been cleared. If there were any um, uh, prior year findings that were not fully implemented, you would see those reported as again as a finding. So you'll see that those have both, uh, all three have been um, corrected. Um, and lastly, just to conclude, um, we, as an audit firm um, and the audit team that comes to perform the audit, um, we know that we're coming in and the work doesn't stop for the staff here and so we really appreciate their assistance um, in preparing for the audit. Um, just one um, kind of aside, we have a client portal that we um, provide the district where they can upload documents for us. Not all clients are great about uploading all of those, um, but here at TAM, each of our items are addressed um, and ready for us when we're um, here on site. So we really appreciate that and the transparency of management during the audit process. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I'll make a quick comment. You might have been the person I spoke with. I know you, your firm had to interview the president yes. of the board. Yep, that and, was me. And yeah. so I, I, I don't recall. I think I may have mentioned it to the rest of the board members, but um, you really were... Um, very exuberant about that fact, probably because you're right in the middle of it, that right. this was a very unusual district, that it wasn't just that everything was up on time, but it was in really good shape and it was there waiting. And so thank you, Corbett, and your team. Um, it, it was really nice to hear, so, and so thank you. Any other questions? Any public comment? I think you can go to your next. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming, thank and much. thank you for waiting patiently. To, oh, yeah, of course, of Yeah, course. really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think...
This is accepting the audit. Do we have to make a motion to officially accept the audit? Let's see. It's I don't think so, but I just want to. Yeah, we don't. Ha this isn't an action item to accept it. I don't think we have to, right? It's been a while. Um, Once a year, and I was. I believe it's an action item to accept. That's oh, it is an action item. Okay. That's my understanding. Okay. Not can approved, I approve, but you accept because accept it. Part. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, can I ask for a motion then to accept the audit report? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. That passed. Now we'll move on and we will, I always have to stop, is it adjourn or recess? You're going to adjourn the Thank meeting. Thank you, that's what I thought. It always says hearing. recess. And I, okay, we will now adjourn the meeting and we will move to a public hearing for articles for sunshining the district CSEA chapter 549 negotiations. Lars Good evening, Christensen. board and Dr. Topier. Uh, we are set to begin negotiations with the California School Employees Association, Chapter 549, uh, through the winter and spring of this current semester. And to do so, uh, both we as a district and CCA must sunshine the articles that we're going to be discussing. Tonight, we are sunshining as a district Article 2, Working Conditions, Article 6, Transfer and Promotions, Article uh, 8, Evaluation Procedures, Article 10, Salary and Allowances, and Article 11, Health and Welfare Benefits. Thank you. Is there anyone that would like to speak during this public hearing? No. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the CSA will be at our next board meeting to Sunshine Therapist. Okay, great. Now we're back in session. Now we're item C, dis discuss and take action on MOA for the TFT contract related to school calendar. Again, that's you, Lars Christensen. Thank you. Uh, as I packet. believe you're aware, uh, calendars are actually uh, a subcommittee, developing calendars is a subcommittee of negotiations, uh, mm -hmm. certificated negotiations. Uh, we recently held um, a subcommittee meeting on calendars to discuss the calendar for next year. It actually has, always, it has already been approved in that we try and stay two years ahead. But we were contacted by the state of California, who essentially informed us that given now the regular occurrences of uh, PG&E power shutoffs, mm -hmm. that that's no longer a random occurrence that you would typically file a waiver for. They're to be expected. We've also, in past years, recent years, had um, school closures due to smoke uh, as a result of wildfire in the northern portion of the state and so forth, and other weather-related things like flooding. So we've added uh, a couple of uh, days to the end of the calendar. Um, that we're calling, we actually haven't settled on a name, I guess. We, we, put, um, we put something on the, uh, the calendar that we wanted to make sure we didn't call them smoke days because they have different connotations. No, smoke days. <laughs> smoke days have different Not connotations good. in a high school environment. No. So we call them, I believe we call them inclement weather days, but we're still working that out. But uh, we appreciate TFT's willingness to reopen next year's calendar because mm -hmm. it had already been approved by this body. And we've added the days at the end of the year. Now, if we uh, hopefully we won't use those days. So if next year's calendar proceeds as we hope it does, just go straight through without any unexpected school closures. Those days, we, we won't attend on those particular days. But as you see by the, the MOU and your, your packet, we've, we've worked out what those days would entail and so forth. So we ask that you approve this calendar uh, with those inclement weather days included. Go ahead. Do you have a question? No, I was going to move. Oh, OK, yes. thank you. So let me first ask the question. Can I have a motion? <laughs> so moved. Uh oh. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Did you say aye over there? Aye, aye. Like a. So, so again, to remind you that that's the twenty. <laughs> these numbers are astounding to me, having started my career a long time ago. Um, this calendar that you've just approved is for the year school year 2021, and we have our committee will continue meeting uh, this winter to establish calendars for 21, 22, and 22, 23, and we will include in these calendars inclement weather days. Mm, okay. We try and stay two years ahead of the. Uh, right. No. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for that clarification. So now we'll move on to uh, new board policy. And I believe this one is Wessel presenting the first reading of the new board policy 5131.8, mobile communication devices.
Good evening. Good evening. I'm trying to mask my disappointment that the crowd was not here for me to talk about <laughs> well, if they'd mobile known, communications they'd and know. tuberculosis policy. Um, they would have stayed if we had told them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I bring them back in. Bring them back in. Um, so I'm I'm going to present uh, or just introduce the first reading of two um, policy updates. Um, the first one uh, is a new policy, which is mobile communication devices, um, and this reflects the new law AB 272 that was put into effect that authorizes the board to limit or prohibit use uh, student use of smartphones while at school or while under supervision or control of a district employee. And there are carve-outs in there for special circumstances, um, emergencies, um, unstructured or out-of-class time, and also when it is uh, indicated by uh, a physician or health professional. Um, we do have several students on our campuses um, with health conditions uh, that, like, uh, diabetes who use their smartphone to monitor now um, and also students mm. with seizure disorders uh, or um, sometimes with panic disorders who keep their phones with them um, in case uh, per doctor's orders um, and it also um, ties in with um, another board policy um, regarding um, confiscation and search and seizure of phones, which we don't really do anymore. We isolate the phone, um, and the policy um, gives us, um, codifies the authority to do that in a disciplinary situation. Can I uh, ask a question or um, bring a point up for the board? Uh, so on that confiscate or the phone policy, the prefatory language that's included with the act, right, or the ed code section, mm -hmm. um, is actually very good because uh, it talks about Gene Twenge's uh, finding about how detrimental phones are on teens' self-esteem um, and how they should get off social media and those sorts of things. And so um, it's not necessary to the policy, but do we send, like would we, it, would this be a policy that we would send home to parents at the beginning of the year? Yes, this will be included in the um, parent student handbook and the annual notice. Okay, so um, I don't, know if parents would read the, I don't know if parents read the policies. I hope they do, but probably not. I can't say that I did very much. Okay, never mind then. Yeah. I was going to say, if there's a way to educate, if there's a way to get the right, information get the that's information. included in the prefatory material in front of parents again, it might be worth it putting it in the policy. But if parents aren't reading the policy, then it doesn't matter. I can, I can consider, consider that. Look okay. If it's into the... Could put it either a wellness, um, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, okay. yeah. Put it. Yeah, because if yeah, you just that take that really language good. from, it, it's actually pretty good talks about the, the ban in France, it talks about, oh, um, and really the effect on teens, uh, depression, anxiety, and self-esteem. I think that would be very good. Yeah, we can, probably, we can include that in the next wellness wave. And then another, you made me think of something else, um, Cynthia, that talked about when we bring on new board policies or updates that they may be distributed from time to time, depending on the subject matter to the administration and all the sites, so everyone's aware. And it also starts reminding everyone that we are governed by board policy. And even though our campuses don't have consistent policies or rules um, regarding, what word was that? Concerning, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, I don't even know. What, okay, regarding, thank you. <laughs> Um, my goodness, um, mobile devices, do you think this will help start the conversation? Because I know there's several board members that would love to see more consistency across the schools with how we handle mobile devices. I don't know that it's going to do much, the policy alone, to um, improve consistency. Is and that my a softball question? A lot of... <laughs> a lot of a lot of what's in the policy is already being implemented. Um, but it certainly brings the conversation. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, I would love to see that just great. Thank and it you. reiterates a teacher's um, right to right. Um, use, it. Yeah. use it. Yeah, yeah, use it. Yeah, so that's good. Any other questions, comments? It's just the first reading. Great. Well, thank you. So this is not an action item. It's the first reading. Now we'll move on to the first reading, revised AR 5141.26, TB testing. TB testing, yes. This is um, an update of an existing policy. It expands from like 12 or 13 lines saying uh, 
it was very detailed. I had not um, read that one before uh, about getting uh, chest x-rays um, in the case. And this is um, updated to reflect um, guidance from the California Department of Public Health uh, uh, at um, the California Department of Healthcare Services clarifying um, that health screening for school entry includes testing for tuberculosis only when required by a local health department. Um, it also reflects uh, law authorizing parents or guardians to, to submit a signed waiver indicating they do not want or are unable to attain, obtain health screening for their child. Um, and we have a very good um, and robust uh, relationship with our Marin County Health Department um, and they, I communicate with them on a regular, on a regular basis. Um, so. This is just updating that policy. Any questions? Seems like a nonsensical policy. <laughs> um, like you can exclude kids that yeah. don't have a test, but then you can't really exclude them unless you've been told by the local officer. So a kid could come to school with TB, and until they're identified by the local health <coughs> officer, or we call and say, we think this kid has TB. The only exception is if we believe that they have been exposed. So if there are other exposed students who maybe had not been exempted or their parents had not exempted them, and there's reason to believe that it is in the school, we can then, override, with help of the county health officer, override that. So it took me several readings to follow the, follow the bouncing ball on that. Okay, looks like we're ready to move on to the next one. First reading, a revision to exhibit 1330, use of school facilities. Oh, this is the funding, right? Or what we charge them. Never mind. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yes, yeah yes, that was. Well said. You need to, <laughs> yeah, you need to include that in your budget updates. Yeah, this is going to be amazing. Prepare to be wowed. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. Um, so again, this is bringing back every year, this will be an annual occurrence uh, of Exhibit 1330, a use of faci school facility fees. Uh, we have to, per our board policy, we are allowed to raise our rates that we charge our community uh, to reflect the Bay Area CPI is what's codified in, in, in our board policy. That technically, just for, you know, for your curiosity, is the San Francisco Metropolitan Statistical Area, the MSA. Um, so those are synonymous. So the MSA for this past year was 4.28%. Um, that relates to an increase of facility rental rates as seen in the exhibit, rounded to the nearest dollar in red. Um, haven't quite crunched the numbers on the additional revenue, uh, but the, the purpose of this is obviously to um, maximize revenue and make sure that we are reinvesting these revenues to support the facilities, the custodial support of these facilities, and make sure they're available to our community um, in safe and proper shape. Um, this is a first reading, of course, but this is the same um, uh, presentation provided one year ago to this board. Yep. These are all hourly rates? Correct. Correct. Yes, they are. Approve new member to a parcel tax citizens oversight committee to for Measure J. Yes, and, and as you said, thank you. It's we are just to be clear talking about Measure J. Um, the the board and the community uh, gracefully support us with that with the passage of Measure J. And part of that was providing community oversight with that, uh, which is a citizens oversight committee or COC for short. Uh, in November, I believe this board approved, uh, we had the pleasure of approving four members to that committee. Uh, we were unable to have a fifth member at that time, uh, but we've fortunately had someone, um, we're blessed to have someone step forward who's extremely qualified, uh, who will represent the uh, Tam High community. Her name is Miss Robin Moses, someone that's familiar to the Mill Valley community, the Tam District, and the Mill Valley School District. Um, so her application sp uh, speaks for itself. Uh, this is the only application we have at this point, uh, but staff does um, recommend that the board consider appointing her to our fifth and final vacancy on our uh, COC, which happens to meet next Wednesday uh, from 8.30 to 10.30. The public is welcome to attend if you care to uh, hear the proceedings about that. Um, but it's my pleasure to bring forward Ms. Moses for the board's consideration. Thank you, and I think we, we had her application in our board packet, so yes. any questions? Ms. Ronish. I move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this takes us, we are going to have the superintendent's report, the trustee report, and we will go back to closed session for about five minutes, and then we'll, uh, Mary will let you know what time we come out and hit the gavel to conclude the meeting. Hey. Uh, good evening. So I did want to highlight first two um, really wonderful honors out of Tam High, and the first one is Rohan Sanda, who was named one of the top 300 science scholars. Um, he, he did a, a project, it was out of 2,000 national-wide um, entries into this science fair, and he was named in the top 300. So it was quite, quite an honor, and he has the opportunity to go on to uh, a pretty significant um, competition. So that's really exciting. And then uh, Sonia Saltzman, also from Tam High, was recently named the Marin Teen Girl of the Year from the Marin Women's Commission for 2019. And she was also um, honored. So both of those will be in my newsletter that goes out tomorrow, um, also along with some information around ninth grade enrollment. Um, I'd like to say we never get to live in any one year in education. So we will begin enrolling our ninth graders for next year at the, begin at the end of this month. So in, in two weeks, we'll start that process. And students will also start selecting their courses for next year. Um, but I also wanted to mention that you know, we're back in the swing of things in January, and this year in the district, we've been focusing on uh, building positive relationships in order to demonstrate respect and responsibility. Those have been themes we've been talking about all year and been focusing on. And over the break, um, I had an opportunity to read again. Um, mm. So I, was, I, I read some articles that resonated with me, and I realized when I was writing this, I was like, oh, well, I was reading articles about teen depression and anxiety. Um, <laughs> But the article's focused on the increased rates of teen depression and anxiety and the importance of relationships to offset those. Um, each article provided a lot of insight and supported the concept of connection as key and that it's our responsibility to connect with others in a respectful and inclusive way. Um, the, one of the articles I read had some startling statistics and that was that the rates of depression and anxiety have drastically increased. There's been a 56% increase in suicide rates for Americans aged 10 to 24 between 2007 and 2017. Uh, that's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. That's, uh, these same data show that the rate of depression among teens has increased by 63% in that same time frame. So while there hasn't been definitive research on causation, there have been many things research indicate have correlations, including intense feelings of isolation and loneliness, fostered by a lack of meaningful relationships or connections with others, and a lack of sense of agency or control over one's life. For me, these themes of relationships, respect, and responsibility all coincided in the readings. Um, I think it's our responsibility to build positive relationships with our students so that no one feels isolated and alone. It's also our responsibility to teach our students the importance of respecting themselves and others. I think it's much more difficult to hate somebody who you, who you actually know well um, and you know personally. Um, further, we have to allow our young people the opportunity to face challenging situations and resolve issues on their own while standing by them should they need the support so that they can build resilience and empathy. At the previous board meeting, we were joking about the old catchphrase, it builds character, um, which for many of us raised in the 70s or 80s was, has become a running joke because it was what our parents said anytime something bad happened to us. Um, it builds character. And yet, I think there's wisdom in those words. Um, I think learning that you can face adversity and overcome it does build resiliency. I think learning that disappointment is just that. It's not a tragedy that it can actually be overcome is incredibly important. I also think a telling aspect of character is caring. And I think that, um, unfortunately, in our current uh, cultural larger national climate, that seems to be diminishing. So in this uh, coming semester, we'll be continuing to build our professional development around um, strong relationship building um, that's inclusive and culture responsive. So, um, we're st that was that was nice of him to do that. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Um, okay, so now we'll move on to trustees report, trustee reports. We'll start with Mr. Pneumonia. <laughs> Hope you feel better. It's important. You're going to need to lay, keep laying low. Nothing? No, I know. Someone else say something. You go right. Uh, I don't have you anything on you. regarding trustee duty, but if anyone has the opportunity to get down to Paso Robles, there's a oh, fabulous yeah. art exhibit down there by Bruce Monroe. It's 58,000 um, lights. Uh, it planted over 15 acres um, at a uh, winery down there, and um, it's phenomenal. Uh, you have to see it at nighttime, but um, it's it's pretty cool. And it's the only one this side. He's got a, one in Australia. Maybe two in Australia, but um, and it's there th at least through the end of June. It may become permanent. Very good. And I don't really have anything to report as well. Um, we'll probably at the next meeting have more to report about from the parcel tax committee. But things are rolling along. So I do want to mention one thing that, um, as some of the students um, mentioned, and I, Lauren, maybe you already said this. I apologize for repeating you. But Redwood is having their unified basketball game this Thursday at oh, I love two thirty, I think. Um, in in the big gym, so if you can stop by, yeah, um, it's it's great. Yeah, that's a those are great. Thank you for mentioning that. So now we will adjourn to or recess to finish closed session, and we'll come back and and uh, adjourn the meeting. And we do not need you to stay. I mean, I, yeah, for sure. But thank you. Do you want to, or do you want to stay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.